Okay, hold on to your hats. This is one of the most important topics of biochemistry. This is the light dependent reaction. Okay, so a lot going on on this. I'm going to draw the diagram first and I'm going to run through just the skeleton notes of what the key terms are that you're going to need to use to get the full marks on this in the exam. Understanding the process is key here. Okay, so where in the plant are we? Well, it's photosynthesis. We're going to be in the chloroplast somewhere. This membrane here is actually going to be the thylakoid membrane. So this is where it all takes place. Okay, so the thylakoid membrane, lots of these thylakoids stacked up into grana. That's to increase the surface area, so there's lots of this reaction happening. We could be on either side here. This top side, the way I'm always going to draw this, is the stroma, which is effectively a little bit like the cytoplasm, but we can't call it the cytoplasm because we're inside a chloroplast and not inside a cell. And then this is obviously inside the thylakoid. Okay, so that's where we are in terms of our positioning. We've got a few things going on here, and I'm going to talk you through it, and then I'm going to put the notes on it at the end. We know that it requires light, so this can be happening during the daytime and not during the nighttime. We're going to make a few products which are going to go on to the light independent reaction, also known as the Calvin cycle, and that's the sort of the purpose of doing this. So I'm going to start off with some green stuff. You might be able to guess what this is. We've got Chloroplast contains something that absorbs light energy. In fact, I'm going to do my light energy in, I should stay consistent, let's do it in green. Okay, so we're going to have this green lightning bolt. This is representing light energy coming in and it strikes the chlorophyll in this blob here. This blob is called a photosystem. This is recognized shorthand PS. I'm going to put this in the notes. Photosystem two. And this is photosystem one. Why are they named this way around when this happens first? Well, because they discovered this one first and then they discovered this one second. So it was just in terms of the order in which they were discovered. So we're gonna say light energy, and the important to say light energy, not just light, is absorbed by the chlorophyll here in photosystem two. This excites an electron. So this is my electron, it gets excited, it gets more energy and it then flows through the membrane through a series of proteins or electron carriers. So I'm going to draw, these are my proteins here, and I've drawn them on an angle for a reason because this electron is going to flow through these and it's going to lose energy as it goes. So it's going downhill, like water flowing off the end of a waterfall. These are flowing downhill and that energy is used to make ATP. In fact, what the wording we're going to use in the exam is that um, the electron flows through the electron trans transport chain, losing energy. This energy is used to combine ADP and PI to form ATP. You're kind of missing a step there, and I'm going to put that on there, but the wording that I choose to put at the bottom here is the wording that they go into in the exam. So, um, but understanding how it works is quite important to that whole process. So what happens, this goes through here and loses energy. Well, that energy pumps some protons from the stroma into the thylakoid. So we end up with lots of protons in here, not so many anywhere else. So we have what's called a proton gradient, just a gradient of protons. Oh, what am I doing? H plus, I'll do one here, ready to go through. These guys can then, because there's a gradient of them, there's not many of them up here. This guy can come up here and it can diffuse through this molecule. This molecule here on the left is rather important. He is called ATP synthase. It's an enzyme, and this enzyme is responsible for making basically all the ATP on Earth. So it's very, very important. And this is how we can drive the reaction. We can join ADP and inorganic phosphate to form ATP, which is one of the products of the light-dependent reaction. The other product that we're going to form is we're going to make reduced NADP. Now we can think of, we'll have come across NAD and NADP, they're not the same. Your only time you're going to come across NADP is in photosynthesis. So you can think of this P as being plants. If you're doing this during respiration, obviously plants respire too, but if you have NADP, it's during photosynthesis. Maybe think of this as NADP for photosynthesis as opposed to plants. And what happens? Well, this electron ends up in photosystem one, 
the plant, the chlorophyll, absorbs more light energy, and this excites the electron again, and this time the electron is so excited it leaves the photosystem. And this allows us to form our reduced NADP, which is actually, there's a little mistake there, this is NADPH, and this is NADP. NADP plus an electron plus some hydrogen forms reduced NADP. And these are the products that go to the Calvin cycle. Calvin cycle is a key term. Okay, so that's more or less the sequence. However, we're losing an electron here. Unless we have an infinite source in this chlorophyll here, which we don't, this can't continue unless we replace some of these guys. So there's one other process that we need to link onto this diagram, and that's going to be water. It's going to absorb more light energy, and this is going to use to split the water, and the water splits into two protons or hydrogen ions. We also get two electrons, and these guys are what's going to come in here to replace these, and we're also going to get half of an oxygen molecule. We always write O2 as O2, and we've got one atom, so we haven't got two of them, we've only got, oh, it's a bit stupid, it's chemi chemical nomenclature. But So, let's put this into some useful words. I might throw a few more little annotations into the diagram so that you've got all the key terms, but we're gonna say that this process is being used to, to take light, light energy, one, two, three, and basically use it to combine uh, to make ATP. So this is sometimes called photophosphorylation. So I'm gonna put that down there as a key term. It occasionally comes up, different exam boards examine that in different ways, but it's using light energy to add phosphate. So don't be too scared if you see that, it's, um, it really doesn't mean any more than that. So we can say that the um, photosynthetic pigments, such as chlorophyll A, absorb light energy. Quite important to say light energy and not just absorb light. You could say a photon if you wanted to, which is like a packet of light energy. What does this do? Well, this excites an electron uh, from the chlorophyll. So it excites an electron which leaves the chlorophyll. We could say, if we wanted to, in photosystem too. It's important that it leaves the, this electron used to belong to the chlorophyll and now it is dissociated or it's, this has become, the chlorophyll has become positive because it's lost the negative. So we can use a word here. This is photoionization. That is appeared on one of the specifications this year. Again, using light energy to make the process of making an ion. Well, this is the chlorophyll is now an ion because it's positively charged because it's lost its negative charge in the electron. What can we say next? Well, this electron here is flowing through these electron carriers. This is whenever you've got an electron going through electron carriers in a membrane, it's called an electron transport chain. I quite frequently use this as an abbreviation. In your exam, always refer to it as this is not that well accepted by the exam boards, unlike PS2 and PS1, which is a recognized shorthand that you can use in the exam. Again, good practice, always write it out in full first time and then put it in brackets afterwards. So we can say that the electron releases energy as it goes through here, which is why I've drawn it going downhill. And uh, we don't have to mention this, these steps about the hydrogen, but that's how it works. And it's really important to understand that. It makes it way easier to understand. So we can say the electron releases energy as it goes along the electron transport chain, you can say this energy is used to join ADP and PI to form ATP. To make ATP. Here, we could mention that the protons are diffusing through ATP synthase. I don't think we're gonna to need to know that. Knowing what this molecule is, and knowing this process, which the process of protons diffusing down the proton gradient, uh, through ATP synthase, this process actually has a name. It's called chemiosmosis, which is on quite a lot of the exam mark schemes, but it's not a major mark. So osmosis is a bit obviously like water diffusing, 
Um, this is chemical osmosis. What are the other products? We should definitely mention the other products of the light dependent reaction. We can say that NADP is reduced to form reduced NADP. I'm actually going to write it for once, reduced NADP, which I'm pretty much always going to write as NADPH. This is accepted on the exam. And then the last bit that we haven't mentioned over here, this I should probably put the little, this is called photolysis. Where am I going to label it? And this is also the electron transport chain. So and we can say photolysis of water produces protons, electrons, and oxygen. And that is it. So a quick recap, light absorbed by the chlorophyll. You must say that in photosystem two, excites an electron. So this, these are all marks, these statements. It, the electron flows through the electron transport chain, releasing energy or re, like at decreasing energy levels, some of the mark schemes say. This energy is used to join ADP and phosphate to make ATP. This is the process. It's very good to understand, but they don't give you marks for it very often. Um, this process, it uses ATP synthase and the process of chemiosmosis, protons flowing through ATP synthase to join ADP and PI. But as I said, in the mark schemes, this is what the words you need to say. We can say that NADP is reduced to form reduced NADP. And these products, these are the only two products and they go off to the Calvin cycle. So this is charging up the batteries using light energy. And then the Calvin cycle, the light independent reaction will be using these products to drive chemistry to basically turn carbon dioxide into useful organic compounds like glucose and fats and proteins and nucleic acids and stuff like that.